these complex fractions are very intimidating when you first come across them because we've got fractions inside of fractions, and it's, I mean, it's scary with all these letters and numbers together. Now, the first thing to notice is to try and identify where is, like, the big fraction. And the biggest fraction is this one that's in the middle. This is what separates this fraction into numerator and denominator. And because I have a fraction in the numerator and a fraction in the denominator, we can look at this as being x squared minus 4 over 4x divided by x minus 2 over 2x. Okay. A fraction is division. So I'm just going to write this complex fraction as a division problem. Then we could treat it like dividing by a fraction. And we all know dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'm going to keep my first fraction the same and just factor it. x squared minus 4 is x plus 2, x minus 2. And I'll have 4x in the denominator. And dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So dividing turns into multiplying, and the fraction turns into its reciprocal, 2x over x minus 2. Now we can just look for common factors to cancel in the numerator and denominator. x minus 2 is going to cancel with this x minus 2. Uh, the x cancels with this x. And 2 will cancel with one of the 2s out of the 4 and leave us with a 2 down here. So, our final solution, our simplified fraction, since there's no more factors to cancel, is x plus 2 over 2. Now, don't be tempted to cancel those 2s. Remember, division, this fraction bar is division, and the only thing that's going to cancel with division is multiplication. The 2 that's in the numerator is not being multiplied by x, it's being added to x, and that's why they do not cancel. So, Again, when we have this complex fraction, what you should do first is identify where is that division symbol, that fraction bar that's in the middle, and it's right there. So we'll rewrite this complex fraction as numerator, 1 over a plus 1 over b, divided by denominator, 1 over a plus b. Now this one's a little bit more complicated than that last one because... We can't turn this into multiplication right away simply because of this 1 over a plus 1 over b. If that was a single fraction, then we're ready to roll. But right now, I have to add these two fractions together, which is going to mean getting common denominators. My, two common, denominator, or my common denominators between the two fractions is going to be a times b, which means this first fraction has to be multiplied by b over b, and the second fraction has to be multiplied by a over a. So... I'm just going to worry about this part. I'm going to leave all of this the same for right now as I simplify this first uh, sum into one single fraction. It will have a common denominator of AB, and the numerator is 1 times B and 1 times A. Now we can, since we're dividing by a fraction, we have one fraction divided by another fraction. That's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So my first fraction, b plus a, order doesn't matter when we're adding, so that's the same as a plus b. Being divided by 1 over a plus b is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So it would be a plus b over 1. We, we want stuff to cancel. We always want stuff to cancel. However, nothing's going to cancel here. Both of those a plus b's are in the numerators. They're not going to cancel with each other, so we're left with a plus b squared over a times b, and that is our simplified fraction.